Welcome to SCR1 TNO Knitting Project Podcast. My name is Sharon and I'm coming to you from Surrey in the UK where I live with my family, three cats and a dog. So interruptions are almost guaranteed. This is episode 38 and it's Friday the 15th of November 2019. I am a day late recording this week. I'm actually a week and a day late recording this week because I didn't manage it last week. Um, I had a bit of rib pain going on last week. I had a bit of a coughing fracture so... Um, I wasn't able to record. Um, hopefully, we're back on our normal schedule. Consequently, because I couldn't record last week, I have a pile sitting in front of me that's absolutely massive. So, on that note, I think we should begin. So, admin, you can find me as SCR1 TNO pretty much everywhere. The podcast, which is SCR1 one TNO Knitting Project podcast has a Ravelry group. We currently have a knitting knit along going along. It finishes at the end of November and it's for stripy socks. So please do go check that out. There is a chat of thread and there is a finished object thread and I'm pleased to say there's loads of finished objects now. So if you're nearly there, you haven't got much longer, just to pop them in. Um, got an idea for a new cowl for next year. It's all to do with knitting a square a day and the cosy memory blanket like I do on mine. So I'll give you more details of that in December when um, we have finished the current cow. So that's it I think for admin today other than to say thank you very much for joining me today. If you are a new viewer thank you so much for checking out my little podcast. This is my podcast about my um, where I get through my whips, which is a rolling six-day rotation. Um, so I, one day I do socks, another day I do something else, something else, and it falls on different days of the week because I am then more busy on other, one days of the week than others. So, for instance, on a Tuesday I do guides so I don't get so much knitting time than I do on a Wednesday when I don't do anything other than maybe have a knit night with a friend. Um, so, yeah, so that's admin. So day one is socks, and I've got a little bit on socks this week to make up for the lack of socks the week before. First of all, you might remember I showed you the yarn for these. These are the Marie Curie socks, and I have both of them. I managed to get them done, um, that I have knitted for Sarah, who is Sherlock Knits on Instagram. And these are for patients in the hospice that she works for, which is Marie Curie. Um, and she wants to try and get a pair of socks for all the patients that will be in a hospice, a Marie Curie hospice, on Christmas Day. Um, I was very much limited by the amount of yarn I had as to the length of foot I could do. So these are only a size five, but um, I didn't have any. I didn't have much yarn left. However, if you are knitting these and you need this blue, give me a shout because I've got loads of it left over. Um, and I know it was quite difficult to get hold of for a little while. So yeah, that's, that's my socks. Now you've seen them, I'm going to pack them up today with a little sock gift band from um, Sam Draws Things. She's got a link on her Instagram page to make a little sock band. Um, I will download that and I will get them off today. So I'm really pleased I managed to get those done. So that's number one sock. Number two sock is living in my Sherry Iris bag, which I haven't changed to a Christmas project bag yet. I'm slowly migrating them across and that's a little pouch by So Me. isn't that lovely, all my notions in it and in here I have put the socks I worked on at the retreat last weekend and this is a sock set by the lovely Kelly from Lay Family Yarn and is from last year and is called Hot Chocolate now I've got the first sock done I just love that pink. That pink is so pretty with it. So I'm guessing that's the marshmallow. Um, and then this is the hot chocolate with some marshmallows inside. So that's my first sock. It's just plain, um, although I did do a twisted rib on it. And I do 60 stitches on a 2.5 millimeter needles. And yeah, obviously it's not blocked yet or anything. So that's the first sock I've done. I cast on in the contrasting color and then just change straight to the main colour because the main colour is gorgeous on this and then on this one I managed to get part way down the leg 
Um, I actually stopped knitting on this and moved to my litmus cow because I thought this would make great car knitting but as it turned out I didn't knit much in the car anyway. I'll explain all that in life stuff. So yeah, so I'm going down the cuff on that one. That's the ball of yarn. Isn't that lovely? So pretty. I've had this in my stash um, since, I think it was the Christmas Eve box last year. So I've had it on my stash for nearly a year. <laughs> it's nearly taken me a year to knit it. I'm catching up slowly. <laughs> um, and it's so pretty, I love it. So I'm looking forward to getting those done. They are really my grab and go project at the moment. I do need to pop it into a Christmas bag because I haven't done that yet. What I do is on the Sunday, after my remembrance parade, because normally I parade, I didn't this year because I was with the guy, well, with Kelly at her retreat, but normally I um, parade with the guides. And then on the Sunday afternoon, after we've paraded, I sit there and change all my projects into Christmas project bags. But that one hasn't quite made it yet. That's my Sherry Iris bag. So that's that sock. And then this one, which has made it into a Christmas bag. And this is a beautiful bag from the lovely Anne of Busy Pottering. Um, and it's a Christmas bag. It's a Christmas pudding bag. I've got two of these, they're slightly different, but I love them. I love Christmas puddings. Oh, talking of which, I am currently cooking my Christmas cake. So it smells of Christmas in the house today. And in here I have got my not so portable yarn bowl with all my minis in, and my Soul Sister socks. So they're my minis, along with a few ends, and it's pretty messy in there to be fair. And then in here, I have got sock number one, which you saw last week, which apparently I haven't actually sewn the ends in yet. I must do that. That's going to have a few ends to sew. I have to be honest, I've done that. I really haven't done that, so I have no idea where all those ends have come from that are on there. But yeah, so this is a lovely pattern by Jules of So Sweet Violet. It's got lovely detail down the front of the sock, and then it's just plain on the back which is beautiful for this uh, particular mini set now this mini set is from Hue Loco and it's her colour riot set um, now I think there's more than one colour riot so this probably had a, um, a name that went with it but I'm really sorry I don't know what it is but it's ever so pretty and it's sparkly too because you know what girl doesn't like a sparkle and then I have cast on the second sock and I am working down the leg. In fact, I think that is the last colour before the um, heel flap. That's my little Christmas pudding. I think that's a Jiggles and Beans stitch marker. If I remember who they are, I will mention them. I don't always know. But yeah, it's little Jiggles and Beans. So I'm going down those. I love this project. It's so pretty. Each time I see, I just want to get one of those. See, this is a good thing about the rotation is that I don't tend to get bored with a project because I only see it one day in six so therefore I tend to kind of look forward to working on it. Um, today is sock day so I may very well get those done. That would be cool because I've got my country garden socks to do it as well and I haven't worked on those this week so I won't show them but um yeah, that would be quite good if I could get that done. So yeah, that's my Soul Sister socks. And that is finally <laughs> done. That's day one socks. So next up is shawl day. Day two is shawl day. And um, for that, I'm working on my litmus cow, which is in my Sherry Iris project bag. Um, I'm not, probably not going to move that one to a Christmas one because I love this bag so much. And it's quite autumnal. So in here... I have the Litmus Cow, which is a pattern by the lovely Amy Florence of Stranded. And I am using an Autumn Treasure Treasures set by Sherry Iris. Um, I haven't got the pattern anymore. I don't know what I've done with the pattern. But it's a free pattern. Amy sign it for free. It's really sweet. So that's my main colour. This is all from her Autumn Treasures. Set. and then I'm using the minis that go with it this is the mini I'm currently on um, and it's a set of 10 minis so 
that was oh that was where I was you can see there I had done to there and then at the retreat on the Sunday I did the rest of that one that 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 and that and then I added in the blue so it is definitely getting there so pretty so I'm one two three I'm on the fourth color of the second repeat so I've got six more colors to do and the segments in between and then you kitchen earth the two ends together um, to be fair you're actually supposed to have a professional cast on but I forgot to do that so um, yeah we'll be fudging that <laughs> but hopefully it'll work but I love this this is another thing that as soon as it comes out I want to work on so hopefully that will get some love at some point right sorry about that I got interrupted and now I don't know where I was showing you this wasn't I I think I think we're done hadn't we I think we chatted about this enough but I love it this is another thing I just want to work on the whole time so I think tomorrow is shawl day today's sock day tomorrow will shawl day so I may work on that but I may work on the next project I'm going to show you so that is living as I said in my sherry iris project bag along with all its little minis so that's that one and then I'm usually for shawl day I have a second project now, while we were at the retreat, the lovely Kelly and Nick um, did a dyeing workshop. So we got to dye our own yarn. And also as part of it, um, lovely Charlie Button, who's the Yarn Ambassador podcast, has designed a pattern for the retreat as well, which is called the Layer Cake. And, and it's Layer Cake. I've only just worked that out. Oh dear. Um, it's a beautiful cow. Not sure whether I printed it out the photo. Yes, I did. There we go. It's a beautiful cow. This is just for the retreat. So, this is the yarn I dyed. So, we, we dyed some four ply fingering. Now, I'm really struggling with the light on this one. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. That bit there. That, that's not too bad um it's sort of a yellow base and i did blue pink green and purple speckles the pink is more of a splodge than a speckle um the idea is it's my logo it's my logo in a yarn i really love it so that's that and then also we had to dye some floof because there's floof in the um pattern too and this is um, Surrey alpaca and silk. So it's the fluffier one of mohair, which um, hopefully I'll, I'll be interested to see what, how I get on with this. If you remember, if you're a very long term viewer of this podcast and you've watched my first podcast, you'll know that I um, had a bit of a disaster with mohair earlier on in the year where I had two mohair projects going at the same time. And um, it, yeah, I kept sneezing. So there we go. And I dyed mine this lovely pink colour. I'm so pleased with this, I have to say. <laughs> I'm really pleased with this pink. This is my pink. Um, and this is it. I've cast it on. And I have started my cowl. Now I've got two. Um, I'm still on the bottom. I've done the rib, so the rib's done. And then with, there's this eyelet section which I'm on now and that's a little progress keeper from the corner of craft lovely Hannah um, so you can see actually there you can see the yellow much better so you can actually see the yellow through there um, I'm having a problem with it, it showing up as grey in the photos it's really not grey it's it is definitely yellow in real life um, I'm so pleased with this and it's such a lovely pattern so I am doing that as well so I want to knit on that all the time I just want to knit all the things all the time so that's not unreasonable is it and that's living in last year i had an advent calendar from knit style yards who's an american dyer lovely sharon and that was the project bag that came with it and it's a bag by donna's designs um which i love so that's hanging out in this one 
Um, and yeah, that's a, another thing that I just want to work on. Now, tomorrow um, is Saturday and I have got a guiding commitment. So on my way to and from that guiding commitment, I'm going to take the litmus cow with me and knit on that. And then when I'm at home and can concentrate a bit more, I'll go and knit on the other one. That's the theory. <laughs> we will see. So that's day two, sure day. So day three is garment day. And that is hanging out in a giant Christmas bag. It's got the 12 days of Christmas on it. That had a 12 days of Christmas mini set in from last year. And I hate to say it, but I'm not sure whose it is. And um, it hasn't got a maker on it. Um, I think it's Elm Wood or Elm Tree Crafts on Etsy, which is the lady who does all the Victor's Potter yarn. Um, it's really pretty, really like it. It's giant, which is what I need for this giant project of mine. And in here is my Ingrid sweater, um, which is a sweater by Isabel Kramer. Um, I don't think I've got a picture. I think the picture is well and truly gone for a walk now. Oh, well, there's, there's a sort of little picture on that one, isn't there? Let's use that picture. So that's it. That's the picture. And it's got some colour work around the bottom and the yoke. And I might put some colour work on the sleeves because I have a lot of yarn left over. So, I managed to get this. I know it's also on my little needle cosy. That was in one of the Christmas boxes last year. Little reindeer. Um, I've managed to get this two giant sock stage now, which means I've split off for the sleeves. Um, and it's all full of ends, but you know, kind of work. So I was there, and this is a lovely set of stitch markers from Copo. Um, if you follow her on Instagram, she's got a lovely Instagram account. She does have amazing stitch markers. So there we go. She is definitely linked in my show notes in one of my, if you look at any of my episodes that actually have show notes, um, you'll find her in, certainly any of the later ones. Um, that's lovely. So here we go. We have finished. I've got a sleeve there. And I've got a sleeve there, or at least an armhole. And I, now I'm just going round and round and round in circles on the blue, um, which is great. So that makes that really good take a long TV knitting. Um, now, as you can see, I did quite a bit of that. Um, I finished the colour work and then did all the blue so that I could. This has got raglan shaping in it as well. Um, so I finished that so that I could join it in the round. Um, and the raglan shaping is done underneath the colour work. Can you see that? I have to show you the side of this. Let's show you the side that hasn't got the um, needles in it, shall we? So it's got. Oh well, this seemed like a good idea at the time. There we go. It's got the shaping there. So it's got the shaping down there for the raglans after you've done the colour work. So you haven't got to do any decreasing or mucking about in the colour work. It's just underneath and then it's quite rapid and you go into the body. I would like to get that done for Christmas. I think I'd have to um, knit on it constantly for that to be a reality. So it's not likely to happen. Maybe we are done for next Christmas. We might go for that. So yeah, that's day three, garment day. That's oh, living in this giant bag. It's really pretty. I love it. I really love the bag. Oh, that's put me put my stitches back in the thingy. Otherwise, um, they will escape. I don't fancy picking that lot up. It's uh. A lovely knit though, and the oh, I didn't say the yarn, did I? The yarn is Serdar um, DK um, Sublime, so it's a commercial yarn, it's a beautiful commercial yarn. It's got silk, um, merino, and cashmere in it, so it's super soft and theoretically washable, which would be nice. So, yeah, that's my 
day three garment day. So day four is crochet day and I have a finished object and a new cast on, none of which are related to any of the projects I've shown you before. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Um, now, I can't remember whether I showed you this last week or not, not last week, last time, um, as a work in progress. I, I don't think I did, but if I did, I, I, I apologise. It is a crochet yarn bowl. Um, and um, I will try and link the pattern in the show notes. I just found it on YouTube. Um, and I have managed to crochet it into a bowl shape, which is a miracle for me. And I have used some hardening agent on it, which means it's rock solid. There are some faults because, you know, first one I've ever made. But I am. In the general scheme of things, I'm actually quite pleased with that. Um, didn't take me long to make. I used two lots of Sheepy's Katona ha um, held together because it was a four ply and you needed a DK because, you know, let's not make my, my life easy. Um, and it's double crochet all round. And you increase, which I've never increased in crochet before, but it kind of worked um, it ended up bowl shaped and then you put it over I've got a pudding basin so I put it over my pudding basin you've covered the pudding basin with um, cling film and then you put it over the top so you get the bowl shape and then you use um, this hardening agent on it and it's, it makes it all shiny on the inside I'm guessing that's where the cling film was and um, it's not it's not shiny on the outside, which actually is, I think is quite clever. Um, but yeah, so as I said, it's not it's not wholly bowl shaped. I think I took it off before it fully dried because it's really really hard now. Um, but I think that bit there happened because I took it off too soon. I have a gremlin making a face at me across the thing. Hello, you. <laughs> So I think I took it off too soon, but I, on the, as a whole, for a first attempt, I am really pleased with that. Um, my thoughts were, what I might do is make a little cloth to go in it, and put in a little soap, um, and some face scrubbies, and make Christmas presents. Um, but that one's mine, because it's my first one, and it's, going to, and it's actually the colours of my bedroom, but that was a coincidence. Um, it's going to sit on my dressing table, um, with my face stuff in it. But yeah, I'm really pleased with that. You can tell, can't you? <laughs> So, yarn bowl. <laughs> By that I mean bowl made of yarn, as opposed to yarn bowl. Um, so that was the first one. The second one, I totally blame um, Chelsea and her mum from the Legacy Fibre Arts podcast for. Now, because it's that time of the year, everybody is casting on granny stripe blankets. This is living it, by the way in my busy pottering giant bag because eventually it'll be a blanket although it's quite laughable at the moment which has got a bell santa on it now Anne last year put these on all her bags and when the postman delivered it it was ringing so i knew exactly what was in it um but i love this bag isn't it pretty my favorite ones this one i love this so this is where my new cast on is or hook on is um residing now this is a polymer hook and i'm really sorry i don't know who it is i will have to look it up um i will try and link all these things that i need to look up in the show notes it won't be along the screen because i haven't got time to do that today unfortunately and i need to get this podcast edited or it won't go up so i'm using that hook and i made a magic knot ball of leftovers from my um ba batimer blanket and i can't get crochet in a straight line it ends up like a triangle by the time i finished it so i am doing a giant granny square i'm just going to go round and round and round and round um hopefully it will have a similar effect so that's the start of it it's not going to be these just these colors there will be a lot of darker colors and because I think they look really nice when they're very random um, but that's just the way it started and that's my 
little magic knot whoops come back my little white magic knot ball I had I used this one in particular just because it was right next to me um, in bed because it was left over from my cozy memories blanket um, and I couldn't be able to go and get another one so I thought I'll just start that one um, and actually to be fair it made a much bigger square than I thought it was going to it's giving me a good start so you'll see that from time to time it's going to be a very long term project and it will only come out when I feel like it but at the moment because everybody else is knitting granny stripes and I can't go crochet in a straight line to save my life I'm doing a great a giant square apologies for my daughter she's cooking in the background right so that's day what are we on day four crochet day so day five is mystery blanket day um, and I have swapped mystery blankets I have decided I want to do this year's one because it's a Christmas one um, there we go that's one of the squares which I absolutely love it's really soft and squidgy so whilst chatting with my lovely friend Katie who's also my moderator on my um, Ravelry group. We had a knit night on Wednesday night. Um, I was working on my next square. And what are you? You are also a Christmas pudding from Jiggles and Beans. Um, so it's cable and it has bubbles. And also there's some, there is some lace action going on in there too. It's like the square that has everything except for at least you don't have to change colour. Um, <laughs> I think that might have finished me off. So this is a Soft Yak DK. It's a Rowan one. Rowan Soft Yak DK. That's the colour. And it's really, really nice. Really nice. So soft. So that's the start of my square. I didn't get very far, but... Um, as Katie will tell you, I was working on it constantly. It just um, takes a while with all the cables and the bubbles as well. So let's just show you the squares I've done so that you can have a recap. You have seen this before at the beginning of the year. Um, and this is this year's mystery blanket. And this is a club that Debbie Hay Abrahams does every year. That's a mystery blanket behind me, whoops, behind there. That's a mystery blanket from years gone by um 2009 I think it's called Arabian Nights but this one is something to do with winter winter solstice I don't know can't remember I'll have to look it up but it's um this year's mystery blanket so that's that one there's that one I do block these although for some reason I haven't actually blocked these ones I need to get them blocked because they will look much better when they're blocked and then there's, see this, that bottom one is actually blocked. Um, there's these ones. This is lovely. I love these fair R squares. They're so pretty. And I mean, because fair R's not bad enough, there's actually beading in there as well. And then I'm actually showing you this upside down. I have just realised those trees are growing upside down. They're Christmas trees. There we go. Now they're the right way up. And another one of the sparkly squares that square is beautiful it's got beads and this lovely these that you leave the yarn at the front and then you pick it up a few stitches up and put a bead on it so pretty and then again another fair isle at the bottom very very pretty it's going to be a gorgeous blanket when it's done I'm thinking if I can get it done you know between now and next year it'd make a lovely backdrop but um, <laughs> there's there's no way it's going to be a backdrop for this year that's for sure that's not happening so I did work a little bit on my mystery blanket this year no, this week even um, and again now I've got it out it's all I want to work on and that is hanging out in my bags by also granny bag um, and I have got some Swan Lake got Swan Lake one I got this last year and I think it's Christmassy enough I'm going to keep it out as a Christmas one um, I think it kind of is an all year round that one but I'm definitely thinking it's Christmassy enough to keep it for Christmas so that is day five mystery blanket day so day six is scrappy project day 
and um, my new scrappy project <laughs> is hanging out in another Bags by Donna. This is um, Dancer, which I got as a sock set from um, Sharon of Knit Style Yarns last Christmas. So pretty. Didn't use it, so this is first use. And um, I totally blame Sophie of the Spring Snowpack Flake podcast for this cast on. This is 100% Sophie's fault. Um, in fact, it couldn't be more Sophie's fault if it tried. Now, <laughs> I've got to find it first. It's quite funny because it seems to have disappeared. It's in here somewhere. I've got bitten by the gnome bug. Me and my friend Katie. We were chatting and we, I think, enabled each other. So that's a gnome hat. Um, I'm calling it a scrappy project because I am using scraps of yarn to um, make them. That's my little known gnome hat. That is a little progress polar bear progress keeper from um, Sugar Tots. She's a Canadian dyer and progress keeper maker. She's really sweet, really sweet. Um, so yeah, so I have, that's as far as I've got. I've only got a hat because I had a very busy day yesterday and didn't get any more done. But um, a sparkly green hat and this is some yarn by Legacy Fibre Arts which is from our advent calendar in years gone past. It's so pretty. <laughs> so it's got a little little sparkly green stroke yellow lime if you like hat. <laughs> so the pattern I'm using is the never not gnoming pattern which hopefully I have got the front page for. Oh no, we don't tell me I haven't got the front page. That's not good. I haven't, have I? Okay, I'm gonna have to show you a miniature name. In fact, there is a picture of the gnome on each page, so that's the gnome I'm doing. I'm doing a little ornamental one because I'd quite like it to go on my tree behind me between now and Christmas if I get him done. My kids will tell you I have a thing about um, gnomes and um, I have a few of them and I love them. So um, I'm looking forward to making my own. And now this is a pattern by... Um, Sarah Skircher, I will put it on the down there because that's probably not how you pronounce it. I'm really sorry. Skira, Skira, Sarah Skira. Um, and it's her, this one I've chosen is her Never Not Gnoming pattern. She has many, many gnome patterns. And should I be successful with this one, I will probably try a few of the others. I really like, she's got a colour work jumper that's got um, gnomes around the yoke. <laughs> I think my girls would kill me, but I'd love to do that one. I was thinking if I've got enough left over from that jumper, I might have a go. So yeah, that's my new obsession on day six, Scrappy Project Day, gnomes. <laughs> so last up is my cozy memory blanket, and it's got to live in its new bag, which is a blanket bag from Busy Puttering, which is huge. She made it for me last year and I absolutely adore it. It's massive. It's perfect for this blanket project because it is getting very big now. Um, and it needed to move home out of the other bun because it was getting too big for it. So this will live out its days now in this one. And we have a few to show this week because obviously I didn't do a podcast last week. So there's loads of them. Um, now, where are we? I obviously did a square off too, so there's probably some squaring off video somewhere. So I've got that one, which is down Sheepy Lane. And that one, which I think is also down Sheepy Lane. That is from Anne of Busy Pottering. That one I'm not sure. And then, here we go. On this side, we have got...
West Green Lofty Yarns with a Brussels sprout. We have got another West Green Loft Yarns with a Christmas tree. West Green Loft Yarns with a Cinderella's carriage. West Green Loft Yarns with a little bell. West Green Loft Yarns with a snowman. And finally, another, the last West Green Loft Yarns with, um, oh, what's she called? Drat, can't remember. I do know, that's annoying. But little winter snowman head. Then we are into Legacy Fibre Arts. And that is a star. Another Legacy. These are all going to be Legacy now. That's another snowman. That is the hat that I'm doing on my gnome. And that is a snowman. That's from um, Chapel View Crafts, I think, and was the snowman that came in um, Kelly's Christmas Eve box last year. That is a robin. No idea who that is. It's very nice though. Um, the yarn is still. This is all legacy fiber arts. That is a bell. Oh, that is another legacy fiber arts and a jumper. Winter jumper. And that one's two days and has got a corner of craft coffee um seasonal coffee cup on it so it's huge it's massive i'm not going to be able to show it because it is getting too it's way past my wingspan now way 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 past my wingspan now massive but i love it so much so yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. As I said, I think I may have some finished, um, like square off video. I just don't know if I used it in the last one. I mean, I'm guessing not. Otherwise, it wouldn't have progress keep mic keepers on it. Hmm. I'll have to check. But if I have, then it will go on the end of this video, which will be a bit of an epic one this month, this week. Right. So that's it for knitting. So actual physical knitting, I'm done. If you watched last week's podcast or last time's podcast, you will know I was going to attempt to make a project bag. Um, attempt is the right word. I have a bag. It will take a project. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's the front. That's the back. Inside it has pockets. Can you see that? It's got a pocket in there. Oh, and apparently escaping stitch markers. So yeah, if I hold it like that, you might be able to see. It has pockets. This is a pattern from the lovely Ellie of Craft House Magic. Um, no reflection on her pattern at all on this. Her pattern is brilliant. My sewing skills um, and my cutting skills, however, leave an awful lot to be desired. So, um, it is a drawstring. It does drawstring up. It didn't, but my friend Katie um, talked to me through how to fix that, so it does now actually draw string up, um, which is brilliant. It's supposed to be box bottom. I actually physically gave up with the box bottom bit and just cut it off and made it just a flat bottom now. So uh, do you want to see all the, the mistakes? There's that one. I obviously caught that wrong there, which is annoying because my sewing skills aren't that bad, but I caught that wrong. Um, I missed a little bit there and ended up having to top sew it. The um, bit where the, I, I missed a bit there, um, missed a little bit there, so that's not caught in, that's not as neat as it could have been. Um, I mean it's not horrendous to be fair, but it's not as neat as it could have been. That side is much better, so side A is much better than side B. <laughs> um, Oh, and apparently I have managed, that's come apart actually, I missed, I need to, need to make a repair on that bit. That's annoying. So that needs, that needs sewing together. Um, I'm pleased that I can actually sew in a straight line. I thought that was going to be my issue. I thought sewing it in a straight line would be more of a problem for me than anything else. But it would seem that measuring something and cutting it to fit is my biggest issue. If I could measure it and cut it to fit, 
um, the actual putting it together would work. Um, so I need to practice my measuring and cutting skills more than my sewing skills, which is kind of cool. Um, but I'm hopeless. I'm absolutely hopeless at getting... I mean, it measures right when I measure it, but when I've cut it, it's completely off. Especially if it's like in a square, one of the sides won't be the right length or... I don't know what I do, but I'm not very good at it. I have bought myself a new cutting mat, I have bought myself a new rotary cutter to see whether that would make any difference. But yeah, so, I mean, you know, and if you're watching, you've got no competition whatsoever. Right, so going back to my bag. So yeah, um, I mean, I am pleased with it. It's really cute and I do keep a, a sock set in here. Well, I will do back in the spring and I, when I've repaired it again. Um, but yeah. <laughs> that's that's what happened basically so that was my sewing right so um happy mail um i had a bit of happy mail this week and acquisitions so i am going to start in a particular order first of all if you've not seen it on instagram it is get your yarn which is granted time of the year again which is really sweet and it's when the yarny community get together and grant wishes for each other um i had a few that i granted and um some very kind people granted me a few wishes. Um, when I was swapping over from my um, Christmas project bags, from my normal board bags to my Christmas project bags, I realised I didn't have as many um, Christmas progress keepers as I thought. And when you see the amount that I've got in my Cozy Memories blanket at the moment, um, I only need a week like that to happen and I run out really quickly. So I said, you know, that would be lovely. That I had two wishes. One was a shout out for my podcast and the other was if you have any Christmas stitch markers. So my lovely friend Jenny, who is really goodness and makes Christmas stitch markers to sell, very kindly granted me a wish. And I'll be honest to say, I was blown away when I saw the amount that had turned up. So here we go. We have got... A snowflake, another snowflake, a, these are lovely, they're on the earring backs which I absolutely adore, a Christmas tree, a snowman, oh they're focusing on me not the snowman, and Santa. So that was one. So that came in this lovely little bag. That's going in there. And Jenny, I'm sure I'm right in saying that you've got some in your shop. Um, and then there was these two, which I absolutely adored. These are lovely. This as light as a feather. They're really big, but they're as light as a feather. So they'll be ideal on my bigger projects, like my jumper. Isn't he lovely? Snowman and a candy cane and failing that I may use them as a bag pull as well because I like them for that as well but so that was those two and then then there was something else then we have these ones of which I've got a present oh okay we're not going to stay still there we go present A snowman. Oh, no, we want to go around that way. Snowman. Candy cane. And another snowman. So, Jenny, thank you so much. They're absolutely gorgeous. Jenny is also the mum and creator behind the Naughty Black Cat, which is actually on the podcast this week because he decided to turn up in time for me to record and he's sitting with his new friend, Wisp, my lovely little wolf behind there. I think she's threatening to eat him if he doesn't behave. But because Jenny is Jenny and she's absolutely amazing, she didn't just send those, she sent me a little notions pouch to keep them in. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I love that little dear. Just so sweet. And it wouldn't be, would it? without a Christmas mini. Isn't that lovely? It's sparkly too. So 
that's definitely going in my blanket and it may very well become a gnome hat too isn't it lovely so jenny thank you so much i was absolutely blown away by the generosity of your parcel that was one now there was another which was from the lovely kim um, and i need to find all my bits from her so she's um kim's true colors on instagram bless her heart um i still to do hers i haven't had a chance to do hers yet i will get my few bits and pieces out at the weekend and she sent back tea which i am going to use very shortly because i've got a fancy cup of tea and here we go we have got a christmas stocking very sweet a candy cane a Christmas bell Ooh. a pair of mitts and this which I think is gorgeous little Christmas bulb it's all, like a mini Christmas ornament can I stay still? Be helpful if it would focus there we go so thank you so much for that and then there was something else which is super sweet and she sent me because she knows i want to get into sewing and i need practice a beautiful katrinkle which is a sweater now i a couple of years ago had the um christmas stocking so that will be on my tree somewhere so now i've got a sweater to go with it and i've also got the thread to make it to do a color work on it so i cannot wait to sit there and just practice on that i've been it's been really hard not to use that before the podcast <laughs> it's one of the reasons i want to podcast today so badly i want to use all these things they're so lovely um so thank you so much kim i really appreciate it um, I have a few other bits and pieces that are coming, which I will show you on next week's podcast. So a couple of weeks ago, I also did the treasure chest raffle, which is a raffle run on Instagram to support a breast cancer hospital in North Wales. And I was very lucky to win a couple of skeins of yarn from the lovely Clara Pavlova, who um, donated a couple, of, a couple of skeins as prizes. And wow, they're amazing skeins. This is um, Skein Queen and is 50% um, merino, 50% silk. So soft. Unbelievably soft. And this is Fibre Spates and this is, wait for it, 63% merino, 20% silk, 50% nylon, and 2% silver, which I'm thinking is Stellina. Um, I don't, can you see it sparkling there? beautiful beautiful sock yarn so um yeah that's gorgeous i was very spoiled very grateful there was also um a nice uh, bar of chocolate in there but that that didn't make it to the podcast i wasn't i wasn't that much of a self-control like, aren't they lovely and they look lovely together oh that might have to be a shawl i don't know i'll get back to you on that it's gorgeous it can sit and be can sit and be petted for a while so onto yarn I've bought now. Uh, first of all, um, I'm lucky enough to be really good friends with Emma from the Harry and Rosie from the Harry Sheep po podcast. And not only are they my good friends, they are amazing dyers. And they showed me this, and I was like, yes, sold. I love it. So it's a blue and a white, and it's a sock set. So it's a 50 gram and a 20 gram set. And I included a little sheepy stitch marker on it too. It's really sweet, but isn't that lovely? Those colours are gorgeous so pretty and oh camera died right they were also doing their christmas colorway isn't that lovely so i got to 
to choose one of those as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to casting those on. So that's um, Emma and Rosie from The Hairy Sheep. Um, and then the rest of it is all to do with the retreat last weekend. So last weekend I was lucky enough to go on um, the Woolay Retreat, which is a retreat run by Lay Family Yarn. Um, the dyer behind it, Kelly, is my friend and I got to go and join the retreat and it was absolutely amazing. So I'll tell you more about the retreat in life stuff, but let me show you what I bought. First of all, this I'd already bought before the retreat, but um, was waiting for me when I um, got there. So I said to her not to worry about posting it. And this is the Christmas collection. So this is a little mini of all of her Christmas colours. So pretty. Don't know what they're going to be yet, but they are really pretty. I love them. Lovely. And also there was, um, <laughs> oops, this, the, the latest dinky box, um, which I haven't opened and I've just realised it's sealed with sellotape, so um, bear with me. I will be back. Wow. Oh, they're pretty. So look at that. Aren't they lovely? Ooh. They are really lovely. So that's the late stinky collection. And Kelly very kindly gave me a mini to go with one of her sock sets, which is the um it's, it's that one. <laughs> I don't think it's got the names of these in here, has it? No. Um so it's whatever that one is, and I needed a mini to go with it. So she's very kindly gave me that um, one. Megan, my lovely youngest daughter, was my chauffeur for the weekend and drove me up there. So I said to her, she may choose a skein of yarn. And I will knit her a pair of socks because she loves hand knitted socks. She's always nicking mine. Um, and she chose this, which is Granny's favourite tipple, which I have to admit, had she not chosen, I was going to buy it anyway because I really liked it. Um, it's beautiful. It's got these reds and cream and brown and it's just beautiful with this lovely mini so um if she hadn't have bought it i would have bought it anyway but now i just get to knit it and um make her socks and um, i may have enough left over because she's only got the same size feet as me she's only got size five feet i may have enough left over to do um shorty socks for me hopefully so yeah isn't that lovely and then kelly X experimented with um, dyeing 100% Highland wool and she, this colour is sea foam and this colour is flamingo aren't they beautiful and I am going to make myself hopefully a pair of colour work mitts in these um, I've made a pair of colour work mitts for my father-in-law this year and for my lovely friend for Christmas I quite like a pair now so um, I just thought these two colours together was so much fun um, and the last time I was there I was tempted to buy it and didn't so this time around I was like yes I'm gonna get that so this is um, 100 grams 420 meters so it's fingering weight wool um, and it's part of her Highland wool collection but yeah so pretty right so that's almost it for acquisitions the last thing I've got is on um, the where Kelly shop is is a it's like a craft centre and there's lots of little artisan shops one of which sold buttons and I really really need some buttons I thought they were absolutely beautiful I bought myself a little pack of buttons um yeah so that's it for acquisitions I think that's enough to be honest I've got all my sherry iris clubs and giddy yarns clubs waiting to be shown i will do that next week because um yeah that's enough for this week oh where are you going bird oh my god
Oh, knife. I'm tempted to get some knitting for this. So what can I grab that's actually... I can't remember what I'm knitting. I can't knit you. Could, could go round around here, couldn't I? Um, that's it for all the nitty stuff this week so um, if you're not going to stick around for the rest of it then thank you so much for joining me today if you are um, I was going to have a chat about the retreat and the lovely people I met um, I want to do some podcast recommendations um, yeah so let's get into it um, podcasts now I've watched my lovely friends the hairy sheep and um, listened to Alice who's Dr Soctogram who does an audio podcast and is very good um, and now I've got a few new podcasts that I've watched this week one is In the Snail Garden um, who is a lovely girl called Paula who was on our retreat and I didn't put two and two together until the next morning until Sunday morning when I was watching her latest vlog and um, realised it was her so um, it's all about her knitting her garden um, it's it's not so much a podcast as a vlog but if you like me you like um, Sherry Iris for instance you'll love her she's really really good she's really sweet um, she's got a travel one that I have because you as you probably know I like doing my own travel ones she's got a travel one which I haven't seen yet so I'm looking forward to that I might put that on this afternoon after I finish editing my own podcast um, I've got a wish to grant for a couple of wishes to grant for shout outs which is Laura of the Lonely Knitter podcast um, sorry my dog and my cat no <laughs> they're looking let's see if I can uh, if I video this bit I might be able to put it in right down there there is the cat can you see it and the dog's just there they were trying to get to each other through the glass at the bottom of the door there it's a bit like um that's not gonna work interrupted by the animals right so what was i saying um right yes wishes podcasts um laura the loneliness podcast um who may be doing daily vlogs by the time you see this bless her she's having a hard time she's stuck in hospital with her pregnancy um and we're doing our best to keep our spirits up we are playing silly games like um if anybody's heard of the app game draw something um, that was fun last night um, <laughs> and we are sending bits and pieces in to try and keep her amused because uh, being stuck in hospital till her little boy is born is probably going to drive her slightly mad but she's in the best place and she ignores acknowledges that and there's nothing serious at the moment so She's just hanging on in there as she does. She's an absolute star, bless her. So that's Laura. Um, and then there's Sophie of the Spring Snowflake podcast. Um, I adore Sophie. I was lucky enough to meet her in real life at the Southern Wall Show. And um, we had a FaceTime chat the other night. Um, I think we, well, from, certainly from my end, I'd like to make that a regular thing and have a knit night with her because she was super fun, um, really sweet. So she's got a podcast, please do go check her out. She crochets as well as knits. So if you are a crocheter, you will particularly enjoy her podcast. Um, the other one I've got a shout out for is um, When Harry Met Oni, which I have watched in the past, haven't seen recently. We'll go and check that out. Please do go watch her. Um, and the other ones that I'm watching at the moment are daily vlogs and that is Kelly of Lay Family Yarn who is doing Lay Family Yarn headquarter um, podcast um, daily vlogs which are brilliant. I love Kelly to pieces. I mean I may be slightly biased because I absolutely adore her but go check her out because you should. And the other one is a girl called Nikki Winterton who's also doing daily vlogs and she is amazing and she weaves and I've just realised um, does weaving classes near me um, in um, a local yarn store which is Tribe in Richmond which is a little distance from me but not that far so I could go to it so I might have to look up and see when she's next doing one and um, you know 
learn how to warp my loom would be good let's not go there huh um so they're the ones i'm watching at the moment retreat oh wow if you can get on to one of kelly's retreats then please do go so much fun it's very laid back it's very friendly i've made a new group of friends from it um i've had an absolute laugh and a half um the lovely Alice, Dr. Sopgram, was there with her mum, Annette, um, who I had met at the Southern Wall show. So I was looking forward to meeting them again and saying hi, um, and it was great. We had such a good time. Um, I was sort of in a group with her, them, and um, Mary, um, who's Mary and the Mutts on Instagram. Um, and, yeah, we I don't think we stopped laughing at all. It was brilliant. Um, we all dyed our yarn together, uh, together with Paula as well from the um, Snail Garden. Um... So on the Saturday we kind of said hello and then different groups went off to go and do their dyeing and during that time we just sat, sit, sat and knitted and chatted and got to know each other which was lovely. There was the most amazing lunch provided by the Tile Press Cafe which is next downstairs and Kelly's lovely daughter Megan works for them and she did all the, t all the, the food for it and it was just unbelievable, so good. I tell you what, there was no excuse to go hungry at this particular uh, retreat because the food was just incredible and there was loads of it. Brilliant. Then in the afternoon on the Saturday, I was in the group that was dying in the afternoon. So we went off and dyed our yarns. Or oh, Everybody's yarn is amazing. Now, if I'm lucky, there is should be some footage um, that I'll put on at the end of us revealing our um, finished yarn on the Sunday. Um... Meg was wandering around for me with the camera. Um, I'm apologies, I haven't got much because um, I'll be honest, I was just enjoying the um, the retreat myself and didn't really want to be sitting there looking at it through the camera lens. Next time I will definitely vlog it. But and Kate, and anyway, um, Shropshire's premier vlogger, aka Kelly Lay, was doing her own vlogs. <laughs> so go check her out and you'll see it. Uh, a bit of a standing joke if you were at the um, retreat. Bless her heart. Um, so yeah, there should be some footage, hopefully, at the end of this. If there's not, you'll know it didn't work. Um, so that was Saturday. Then Saturday evening we had a meal together, which was lovely. And it was at our, the um, pub where we were staying. It was at our pub. So that, that was great. So I didn't have to worry about going home. Amazing food. But wow, the portion sizes were huge. Um, so that was the Saturday evening. Then the Sunday morning... It was a later start and we got to have breakfast. We didn't get to have breakfast the first day because our B&B &B were being awkward. Um, <laughs> but we did on the second day and it was really yummy. Um, and then Meg and I packed up the room, went down to meet everybody down at the craft centre. And Sunday was just such a lovely chilled out, do what you want, when you want day. Um, lunch was served. I had Welsh water a bit and it was just gorgeous. Just brilliant. And then we had an afternoon knit and then we everybody started heading off. Um, some people left earlier than others because they lived further away. Um, me and Meg's left about half three, I think. Um, and I mean, it took us about four hours to get home, I think, because we had traffic and we had weather. So um, it wasn't the greatest journey home, but I just sat and kind of chatted and kept her company. Now, on the way up there, the minute literally we hadn't even left my local area um a lorry kicked up a stone and it hit meg's windscreen it sounded like it had hit the side of the car so we were like checking the side windows we couldn't see any damage we didn't worry about it and then we were driving down the motorway and all of a sudden i said to meg um have you always had that crack in your windscreen and on her side there's just a crack coming down the windscreen so we used a marker pen and marked it to see whether it was traveling it was definitely traveling so um we had that as a bit of a worry the whole way there um we didn't do any driving in the car whilst we were there she was going to go off and do other bits and pieces but she decided she really didn't want to risk it going um if she was on her own so she didn't she stayed in the hotel room um and then we drove back and we were just keeping an eye on that the glass the whole way back. But we've got it home. We limped the car home. Um, so she's getting it fixed this end, which is good news. But I did feel sorry for her, bless her. She um, didn't have much luck with cars, to be honest. <laughs> um, but equally, you know, she's doing her mum a favour and ends up with a pinking windscreen.
cracked not great um yeah so that was the weekend work has been well work it's been hard work a bit fed up you know but hey who <coughs> it's what happens with work isn't it so yeah the only other thing really is just the kids and the dog um kids are all fine nothing to report there they're all good and um the puppy is much better which is really good news except for the fact that she's now eating us out of house and home um <laughs> including things she probably shouldn't be eating mm, little horror um so we have to be really careful not to leave anything lying around or she'll have it which is not like her so i'm thinking she must be genuinely hungry um the cats have lost their dinner a few times now um so yeah but it's just lovely to see her back to her old self and eating everything inside which is fantastic um upcoming week this weekend tomorrow i am taking the guides brownies and rainbows trampolining not our local trampolining park um but that's not going to be a huge amount of time i shall be packing up all my yarn wishes tomorrow um i have had a massive tidy up and a change around if you've noticed of my backdrop so we're not Halloween anymore and we're winter because um, I think my kids would have killed me if I'd gone straight into Christmas. So um, we, we've got a bit of a winter thing going on behind us before we head to Christmas. Um, I don't think I've got anything particularly special planned next week. It's just work and um, guides and brownies as usual. So that's it from me this week. I hope you all have a great week wherever you are. Take care and I will see you next week.
Ik heb een waarom die genoemd is. Ik heb
Yeah. 